respected chairperson, uh, it is my great privilege to talk in front of the August gathering on the most debated but worth spending topics, hypertriglyceridemia in Indians does it require treatments. So, <clears throat> my previous speaker already mentioned about the high dose statin. It's very important. High dose statin should be the first target of the uh, any dyslipidemia. I will quickly go through the prevalence of hypertriglyceridemia in India, the residual CV risk, and CV risk for patient on statin therapy, and the hypertriglyceridemia and its role in the atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, and whatever the guidelines are there. The prevalence of dyslipidemia in diabetics, if you consider the 85.5 percent of the males and 97.2 percent of the females are having a dyslipidemia. Now, if you throw the, go through the Indian Heart, Indian Heart Watch multi-site study, here you can see the LDL cholesterol more than 100 is near about 50 percent and TG more than 150 is almost 42 percent. It's not a very joke. Now, if you go through the 20-year trends in the Jaipur Heart Watch studies, Indian, all of them, the Indians, the cholesterol levels are gradually decreasing because of the widespread use of the statin. No question about it. But on the contrary, we are seeing that triglyceride levels are gradually increasing over the 20-year trends in the India. So why the TG is getting importance? So why do we need another metric in the dyslipidemia management? If statin is there, LDL is there, why are we doing? We are considering the another lipid parameters. The most important is that the, this line, the risk of CAD remains high even after the achieving the recommended LDL goals as per our previous speaker, Professor Vaduri. Yes, we know the statin is the most important drug. Now, if you go through this slide, primary prevention, already mentioned about this, all the studies at best reduced the incident 25 to 30 percent. The remaining 70 percent of the risk is remain even after achieving the LDL cholesterol as per the recommended goal. So, something is there. We have to think beyond of the statin. Now, if the R31 study, residual risk reduction in the diabetic studies, here you can see this, the, again, the risk reduction in DM is less with that of the statin. So, something is there in the DM special is there. Now, if you consider the non-HDL, yes, you can see this kaplan meyer chart. If the non-HDL is gradually increasing and the risk of mortality or CBD bands, CBD bands incidence is increasing. So here is also non-HDL is also an important part. Now non-HDL and CBD, if you go through this slide, now if the targeted LDL cholesterol is more than 100, but non-HDL is less than 30, the hazard ratio is almost 1, 1.02, peculiar things. Now if the non-HDL is more than 130, that is not control, but LDL is control, then the hazard ratio is 1.32 is higher, 30 percent higher. So that means among the statin treated patients, non-HDL is associated with a risk of future major CV events even when the LDL cholesterol is controlled. So role of non-HDL in the DM is also supported by the Framingham core study, Framingham Austin study, lipid research follow-up study as well as the MR fit study. So study. This shows that relative risk of death in the DM compared to the non-DM is 7.2 for LDL less than 100. Just look at the figure. But non-HDL is more than 130. So that's very important. Now non-HDL is a better indicator of residual risk than the LDL C and the APO B. Where, when, which condition is very important. The condition is the TG are associated with the 200 to 500. In this condition, Non-HDL is more predictive of the cardiovascular disease than the other. And as well as the patients on the statin therapy, in that cases, the non-HDL is an another important marker. Now you can see, sir, as already the Bhaduri sir has mentioned about the increase or high intensity of the statin to reduce the LDL cholesterol, and this obviously will reduce that to some extent of the triglyceride also. But the Vaisa study shows that the 50 percent not attend that targeted TG goal in spite of the optimal statin dose. So in spite of using highest dose of statin, you can see again that is 70 percent, 70 to 80 percent of the CBB still occur. This is very important. 
So this is and this is already mentioned about the studies. Now residual risk, cardiovascular risk for patients on the statin therapy. This is all study. The HPA study, RAL study, Arvida 2 trial, YOLO trial, all showed showed that the higher event rate than in the non-DM, even after the 40 milligram of simvastatin, in the RAL studies, that is the marked progression of the atherosclerotic volume, even after the 80 milligram of statin in the DM, and in the Arvida 2 progression of CMT in the DM, even after the statin therapy. And the YOLO trial shows the lipid core content is still high even on the statin therapy. We know that every guideline dictates about the LDL, LDL and LDL, but no one says about the TG. But they are giving the target TG should be less than 150. Why? There is no definite guideline. They are not telling that TG should be reduced by this way, by this way, by this drug, this drug. But what they are dictating that TG should be less than 150. So something is there that is not mentioned because these are all the studies are uh, uh, regarding the st uh, TG is mainly the very, uh, not a very large study. And the miracle studies also say that TG, as the TG is increasing, the risk of cardiovascular events is increasing. Even another study, the Kajiko White also says that the TG, when the TG is more than 100, increase risk of the CVD and the not fasting TG is mainly related with the TG RL. Again, this is the Shankar et al. They showed that HTG is associated with the ISD, especially in the combination of the diabetes increase, OST ratio, and the obesity. In the large mental analysis, it also showed that one standard deviation increase in the TG level, there is a 54% increase in the risk of the MI. These genetic studies also proved that TG has a very good role in the pathogenesis of the atherosclerosis, a single nucleotide polymorphism study, mutation of the LPL gene, mutation of the apoc 3 angiopure, angiopoietin like 4 protein, all studies show that the TG has a great role in the atherosclerosis. Now how they cause the atherosclerosis? The very large micro, large molecules cannot enter, but the TG remnants are freely enter into the uh, endocyte, uh, um, vascular cell, and they, they, uh, they are uh, basically degraded by the LPL and they produce the free fatty acid and the mon uh, monacyl glycerol as well as they also easily taken up by the macrophage and they form some um, um, foam cells and they also release some inflammatory markers and they actually produce the atherosclerosis. Now we know that LDL, we have about the small dense LDL is more atherogenic. This small dense LDL are usually associated with the TG. When the a fasting TG is more than uh, near about 100, there is 85% of the population has a predominantly large bone and LDL particles in comparison to the fasting TG more than 250 where the small dense LDL particles. So higher TG level is associated with the small dense LDL. Role of TG in atherosclerosis, in other studies shows the increased TB level, TG levels by 88 milligram per DL are remarkably raises the risk of CD, CAD by 30% in the men and 75% in the women. And then another is also the effect of lower TG on the, and the heart TG on the coronary atheromuscular. Yeah, this is also published in the arterial thrombosis vascular biology. Here is that irrespective of the achieved LDL cholesterol, CRP level, or in the diabetic status, uh, status of the leg, significantly increased atheroma volume in uh, atheroma volume regression with the lowering of the TG. Now the HTG and CVD is also another study is that non-fasting TG, non-fasting TG is also associated with the non-fasting TG less than 90, had a 60% lesser risk of CB events compared to the participant with the non-fasting TG more than 350. This is also supported by the BIPD style and Jupiter style also shows that role of TG RL in the pathogenesis. Field and accord, low large tube trial on the phenophyll bed, they fails to give any benefits on the primary endpoints, but the most fallacy of this study is that they take the TG level near about 150 to 165 like this, not higher TG levels. But then the sub analysis showed that benefit in patients with the higher TG level, higher baseline TG level more than 200 and the low age level less than 40. So Indian Westerns, well, I'm not going details, this is already mentioned, these are, uh, Indians are very peculiar, peculiar in the term of, there are peculiar uh, uh, parameters. And the Asian Indian paradox is there, Asians are having a higher uh, cardiovascular events. And Asian having a higher atherogenic dyslipidemia. This is mainly the high TG, low HDL, and the high small dense LDL. And this is are more pre prevalent in the Indian, type 2 diabetes, metabolic syndrome, and CSD, the young. And this is another important new onset type 2 diabetes is statin-treated patient, the atherogenic dyslipidemia has a role. 
risk assessment tool to be India for the Indian to be uh, changes or multiplied. Usually the Framingham risk score is multiplied by 1.222 times. Lipid management in India as a national cross-sectional study also showed that for high TG, we are the physicians of the Indian physicians who use the statin fibrate combination mostly. Principal intervention of this uh, trigic dyslipidemia, this is the point is more important, the unique pattern of the dyslipidemia in India to be uh, kept in mind. So there should be individualized approach is important and this approach should be extended beyond the conventional stereotype guidelines. And non-HDL cholesterol may be particularly precious for the Asian Indians and HDG and the low LDL cholesterol concomitantly raises the rate of CSD nearly twofold. And this is relevant in the treatment of dyslipidemia in Indians. What well, the non fundamental treatment? Yes, more important the lifestyle measurement, lifestyle measurement, and lifestyle measurement, and exclude the secondary causes. What about the pharmacological therapy is there? Yes, statin is the most important when the TG is more than 200. And if the, in the uh, armamentian, there's the fibr fibrate is there, there are so many styrols there. Saraguliter in the diabetic, dyslipidemia, atherogenic, di atherogenic diabetic dyslipidemia, statin fibrate combination, mainly the, it's, it's proved in beyond the TG less than. 200 milligram DL is not achieved with statin, then the statin fibrate combination should be used. And the other important trial is that, that omega-3 fatty acids, equals of intern ethyl group, uh, ethyl 2 gram BD or 4 gram, this is a reduced it trial, is proved it, and strength trial also proved that omega-3 fatty acids are a very good drug. And as per the Indian guidelines, if the, they have given importance on the TG, but later on they give importance on non-HDL cholesterol. So statin and niacin combination are not very good drugs. In summary, non-statin lipid lowering agent should not be considered again and again, should not be considered without proper statin therapy. We do not have the strong evidence for massive reduction with the TG lowering therapy, and this is mainly fruitful in the mainly in the TG lowering therapy is fruitful in the diabetes, atherogenic diabetic dyslipidemia uh, with a high CBD risk and established CBD. So the medicine is constantly changing and evolving. We often have to deal with the moving targets. Clinicians should use their judgment, evidence, and experience in treating high TG in Indians on the background of uh, international guidelines. Thank you.